I've driven up here to North Yorkshire to visit this garage because inside this garage is a lovely 80s German coupe which was bought by a chap called Pete as a bit of a midlife crisis treat actually but it's not come out of there in over 20 years and sadly Pete passed away last year. We don't know the condition of it, but we do know it's really interesting. And I'm hopefully pulling it out today and maybe firing the beast up. This is, of course, a barn find edition of The Late Break Show. I'm Johnny Smith. This episode is proudly supported by carandclassic.com, the biggest marketplace in Europe for classic cars, with over 35,000 vehicles on sale via online auction and classifieds. So the owner the late owner of this car's family don't want to be on camera for several personal reasons which we respect um, and it was a perfect excuse for me to bring along this man tony bmw if you are not familiar with tony bmw you need to watch the video above my head which is when tony helped to get going a beautiful rare m535i lightweight at one of our most successful barn find videos actually glorious so i brought tony along to a be the authority on early beamers and B, hopefully, um, see if we can fire up this, this six series. Hope so. It is a six series. It's an E24 six series. So the information that we've been given is, we think the car came off the road in 2001. Mm -hmm. MOTs support that. Um, we don't know if it went away in there because of a fault. I think so. But we think so, which is why Tony's frowning, because we're going, it, we, we, we might have to do a bit of kind of diagnostic work. The late owner's daughter, who we've liaised with to get permission to come here, she knew nothing about weirdos like us on the Late Break Show wanting to film barn finds. She actually didn't even know that her dad still owned the car and uh, the state in which it was in, covered in, in, in gas pipe fittings and, and bits of scrap, which I'll come on to in a bit. Um, she took a lot of those off and skipped them as part of the house clearance um, before selling this house. But we do have photos of what it was like when she first opened the garage door and saw it, which we'll put on screen now because it's amazing. The car, other than having stuff removed from it, is untouched. I haven't seen it yet. Neither is Tony. Not yet. So let's have a look. We don't fake this stuff. It's not worth it, is it? Nope. Come on, Tony, come in. Come in, because... Oh, excellent. Oh. <clears throat> So I don't actually know what model 6 Series this is. 628. It's a 628. 628, yeah. 628 CSI. Yeah. All I know is that it is manual gearbox. Mm. It's quite unusual for a, six, for a 628. Yeah, which is quite cool. And um, obviously A-Reg 1984, yeah. 83. Yeah. Um, and grey, dolphin grey. Dolphin grey. Which yeah. is a cool colour for one of these. You can see from the scratch marks and stuff on the, on the body, this is where all of the stuff was, was piled all around it and has been since removed and skipped. There's a badge on that. There's a C and a, there's CSI, a C. It could be CSI. There's another bit of badge, maybe it's... There we go, 628. There's an I all right. on the seat. <laughs> the, the, the boot. So what we'll do, I think, I've noticed that's the only tire I think that's inflated. And that is really tight against the wall. So, yeah, that's completely flat. Oh, is it? Bums. So I think what we'll do is if we clear a bit of this stuff out of the way, and then we'll look to inflate the tires, because if we move it out, we'll have much better access to have a look at the engine bay and stuff, won't we? Yeah. It's a good looking car. It though, is, isn't it? Yeah. Got motorsport spoilers on as well. Front, yeah. Front and rear spoiler. Yeah. There's an M badge there, yeah. yeah. And there's some wheels and stuff. I've just noticed there's wheels yeah, inside the, it. I don't think they're off this. I think they might be too small, look like 14 inch. But uh, yeah, be interesting to get them out. Now, Holly, the daughter of Pete, who owned the car, she said they haven't really looked inside it and they can't get in the boot. So they don't have any idea what's in the boot. There could be something exciting in the boot. There could be something just really boring, like an old newspaper. But what we'll do, we'll clear this out, see if we can get the tires inflated and then roll it out into the daytime. Yeah, great. This is a bit of a, a concern, Johnny, as to why the air filter's not on, but... It's a, oh, man. It's definitely a concern why it's not on the car. So when did they launch the... This is the E24, isn't it? Well, it was earlier. It was probably something like 77, I think. Yeah. The earlier ones were actually based on the E12 platform. So that, the e the 
same chass chassis as the E12, same engine. Yeah. Um, the later ones from about 19... Is it 82 or something? 81, 82, I think they changed the E28 platform. Yes. So this is an E28 is 5 series underneath? E28, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know your way around yeah. it. Yeah. E yeah. But uh, notoriously rusty as well, Yeah. as, as all BMWs that period were. And the, 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 the coupe, the 6 series, was made by Carmen. Yes. So, so the, it, was, it was coach built. Yes, so they took the 5 series chassis, yeah. cut parts off it, and then spot welded new parts on to make the wings fit differently. And Is also, that what they did? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So okay. you'll see, you know, you can see where there's a bit being uh, spot welded on. Okay. And that's where they normally start to rot as well. So. Okay. But yeah, it's pretty grotty around the sunroof as well. Really cool. We just had um, the neighbour right opposite open the door and walk over and say, God, I remember the day when he, when Pete moved in and, uh, and drove this car in. That was the one and only time I've ever seen the car <laughs> running and driving. And he said, for years, I kept saying to Pete, what, why don't you just get it, get, get it sold or get it back on the road? He's like, yeah, we'll do, we'll do. But we were just saying, Tony, um, we asked him whether he knew what was wrong with it. He said he thought there was some rust wasn't sure whether there was a problem with the way it ran, but he said, I remember listening to it, hearing it running and driving in that time, and he said it sounded pretty good to me. So, again... Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers was, crossed, uh, mechanically, yep, yep. it might be okay. Yep. Yeah, you try and get in the boot. <clears throat> Obviously... The lock's stuck in. Viewers, come back and see me in about an hour. Yeah? This leg will be this big. This leg will just be the same. Think of a crab. Fighting claw, eating claw. Fighting claw, eating claw. <laughs> There's no movement in that at all. Really? Yep. Do you have, there's no other release for the boot? No, um, there's a central lock and solenoid, but that's not gonna um, work this, this, the plunger. It's just gonna stop yeah. you working the plunger. Yeah. Bloody love this boot spoiler. Yeah. Two-tone as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, hey. your blighter. Okay, so. No, oh, plumbing stuff. <laughs> it's not BMW. Damn it. That's uh, very much plumbing. Yeah. Oh well, you, you, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. We needed to open the boot anyway. Yeah. Well, we must do the one thing that everybody will want to know is what's in the toolkit. Ah. What do you think, full or empty? I'm going to go two thirds. What are you going to go? Empty. Oh, are you? Oh, Oh my wow. gosh. Okay. There's only one, one spanner There's missing. only one thing. Yeah, missing. one screwdriver missing. Oh, look at that. And the earlier red handle screwdriver, they're quite rare actually. The later ones had a green one on. Green one, so. And that's why I've brought you along yeah. to this shoot. Because <laughs> it's all about the red screwdriver. Yeah, it is. Okay. There's one. Yeah, I'm going to say yes. Ah, oh, there is, yeah. Oh, there is, yeah. okay. Yeah, I haven't seen many males. That's a, that's a proper genuine Michelin XWX tyre. It is, isn't it? And period one. Yeah. That spare wheel does look solid. It's not little, bad at all. A little bit of mould and grot on that seam again. Yeah, but it's, just, it's just around them seams, isn't it? Yeah, but hopefully that's not too bad. Bring a compressor, they said. Yes. No, said Johnny. Who's the twat now? This looks so, so dodgy. Well, the news that everyone wants to know is, have we got four inflated tires? Answer, yes we have. I can give my legs a rest. Yeah, just looking at the interior, uh, it's really quite nice condition actually. I can't see any rips or tears in the seats. It's quite unusual. It doesn't even seem to be any wear on the bolster. That's cool. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, nice. Cobra alarm on the back as well. Oh, no. Well, that could be bad news, couldn't it? Yeah. I hope so it hasn't it's... got an immobiliser or something on it as well. Do you fear immobilisers? Uh, <laughs> definitely an 80s one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, get, let's, see if the let's see if the brakes are seized. Tyres are up. Fingers crossed it's, un it's not seized so we can push it push out, it otherwise out. we'll have to, might have to drag it kicking and screaming. Yeah. Tony's going to jack the, uh, the car up, see if we can free off the the hubs because it is brakes are seized. Surprise, surprise. Um, while he's doing that, like, subscribe. Why not have a look at the Late Brake Show merch store? I'll put a link in the description. You can buy all sorts. Just saying.
can't buy fleeces. Yet. Yet. Oh, it's one off. Ah, do you know what? This isn't seized. Is it not? I'm just turning it now. Oh, right, excellent. Yeah, so that's all the nuts out apart from this lock and wheel nut. I mean, I, I haven't seen one as bad as this before. This is really, it's a really shallow, that is horrible. shallow key. Yeah. And look that's at, the play in it. Look at the play on it. That's now, awful. And you got even start. And it's been torqued right up. Yeah. God. Well, what's the worst that could happen? Well, I, I think I know. I think you know as well. <laughs> Oh, something's moving. Oh, it is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hopefully it's not twisting. <sighs> is, it, is it all right? Oh, yes, excellent. Bloody hell, I can't stand those lock and wheel nut things. They're awful. You know, quite a shallow locating peg for this lock and wheel nut. They're horrible because you have to put loads of pressure on them, especially if someone talks them up too tight. But Tony has succeeded. We've got it out. This wheel can come off. We can hopefully unseize do you need your mallet? Yeah. Tony? Yeah. While you're down there, uh, no, not like that. <laughs> uh, I'm just, I've, I've, I made a few notes when I was researching e E24 6 Series last night. Designed by Paul Bragg, replaced the E9. Yes. The E9 must have been ancient compared yeah. to this. In terms of- the 60s, yeah. Yeah. And then um, launched in 76 with the 630 CS, 633 CSC, yeah. Yeah. and then um, and then went on to the, the 635 and these cars. Post 82, you said got the the new drivetrain platform. E20 drive drivetrain. So yeah. different dash, different suspension, better technology, ABS option, and all that stuff. Production ended in 89. It's quite a long. Yeah, there was a, the last one. The last runouts were the Motorsport Highline with the all leather. Leather headline and leather dash, or leather, everything leather, yeah. That's probably, the, are they the most desirable? Uh, yeah, well, the M6, I guess, is the most desirable, but yeah, the, yeah. the last the last highlines are the nice cars. Optional limited slip diff, Gatrag manual gearboxes, I think five speed came after 1980 or 81. Yeah, well, this has got a five speed in, it'll be the Gatrag one as well. Yeah. Overdrive, not the dog leg, which was an earlier you know, the E12 base ones, had, I think, had, had tend to have the dog Like leg that white car. Exactly yeah, like that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So this car being a, a 628, 2788cc was the M30B28 engine. Yes, yeah, Is that right? Yeah. 184 horse. Yep. Yeah. Eight seconds to 60, 120, nearly 130 mile an hour still. It's not bad for the 80s. It's 20 grand when it was new. 25 for the 635 CSI. That's all I've got, uh, I'm afraid, unless you want to add any more into that. There was a bit of a funny phase in the 81, 82, so some of them, even though they had the later body style, yeah, uh, with the longer bumpers, they had the earlier engine and drivetrain. Okay. And some of them had earlier interiors, but later exterior body, so there was, there was a bit of a transition phase there. Okay. And I, th see, I think it was about 81, 82. Do you like the transition phase, uh, cars? No. You don't? No, I what? prefer the early ones. Because oh, I'm an e e E12 guy, so. Get you. You're an E12 guy? Yeah. You getting any movement at all? No. Ah, oh, sugar. I can't even get the wheel off, so that's why I've resorted to hitting the brakes instead, but sugar. it's absolutely solid. The problem is the hand brakes on an internal drum. Oh, no. That's just the wheel with no wheel nuts in. Off. That's it. It's quite a chunky rim, isn't it? Um, probably narrower on the front as well, because you, you can get a big wide wheel on the back of the six. Is it quite quite a lot of surface rust that you've banged off? There we go. Yeah, that, that's, that's shaking free nicely. So we stick that wheel back on? Yep. 
Here we go. Yeah, Pentas. Says it on. Does it? Yeah, made in Britain. Penta. Nice Pentas made in Britain. Sound like a British thing. I thought they were German. Right, that'll do. They're all off the ground yet. Okay. We've unseized two out of the four wheels. That one's still seized on the uh, offside rear. This one's um, come off nicely. We've got to get access to this. If we can get access to this, then we've unseized three out of four. And then we can probably drag it a little. But we've got the car so tight against the wall, we've got to drag it this way a little. So we just jacked it up and we're going to walk it on the jack this away, even if it's just four or five inches. Yes. <laughs> yes. Did you get that Power film? of the arse. <laughs> <laughs> if someone's thinking of putting a car away for the next 25 years, could you do me a favour and just put it in a slightly wider garage? If that's all right. Just, you know, just the... Just going to put that out there. Bit of rust on the Penta. Look at that. Bit of... Bit of brake disc. Yes, 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 free as a bird. All right, okay. Unseized, 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 still a bit seized. Gonna have one last go on it. If not, we'll t try and tug it out with just one wheel resisting. Um, and hopefully that'll be all right. Well, <sighs> is that it? Moved a bit more there, definitely moved more. That's how badly it can seize without the handbrake on. Bloody hell. We've got any way of stopping it. It's not going to run away, is it? No, it, I'll just, I'll, I'll run away. It, it is finding a little bit, so. Are you are right on the other side of the door? I don't want it to run down it. No. Okay. Oh no, it's a massive bin full of rainwater. Ah. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, a BMW 628 CSI. Looks really quite good in here. Do you not want to know what music is on this what this tape? Because that's the thing we all want to know, right? Feel real feelings and rock and roll hits. Feel real feelings. Oh, and Robert Palmer. Ah, classic. Definitely not pirated Robert Palmer. I mean you've got the dents from where the alloy wheels were sat on these seats. But this leather upholstery is rather good. Dash looks great. These door panels look pretty straight. And um, 191 and a half thousand miles. That's a lot of miles, considering it came off the road to over 20 years ago. The interior doesn't sort of show that, does it, at all? No. Look at these. I love these bucket seats in the back here. They're great. Yeah, it's really good in here. You've got that. Is that... Yeah, that headlining's all right with the manual sunroof. I'm not going to open it now. Um, yeah. The immobiliser is a bit scary, isn't it? Mm. That little fob there. But um, now, we have, I said before earlier when we, were, when we were tinkering in the garage, there's some documents for this car. There's even the build sheet. Let's talk about the build sheet. As we said before, the, uh, the owner of this car, Pete, he, um, he was a gas engineer hence all the gas fittings and stuff and the the service history documents are no different they're in a they're in a boiler brochure bm documents and then in, in here oh, that's the build sheet there okay so that thing is really quite crucial isn't it yeah that tells you what it came off the production line with oh, someone's even gone to the effort of of, of uh, laminating it so that says when it came off December 83, 
and it says, what does it say? Dolphin grey colour, upholstery, black leather, yes. Manual sliding roof, yes. Front and rear spoilers, so that's that M Sport yeah, kit. Yeah, for genuine. Yeah. Fitted, for, fitted from brand new. Yeah. We can check the engine number, but that's really cool to have that, yes. isn't it? Some old MOTs and stuff. I do like old MOTs, gives you an idea of mileage. So hang on, that's the last MOT, which expired July the 9th, 2002, it expired at 186,000 miles. 2001 receipt for oil filter, air filter, fuel filter. What mileage was that? Didn't say. No, it doesn't, doesn't say. say. But that's a, that's a service with plugs. Yeah, brakes as well. Uh, strip and clean, lubricate all brakes. Advisory: extensive rusting to underbody, rear floor to sill areas, and front and rear under the wings. Yeah, Heavy rust in ne near side and offside front suspension, legs and subframe. Okay. And what year was that? 2001. All oh, right. Okay. I mean, that's very typical of these. Yeah. Must that must have been the fail sheet, and yeah. then it's been had the work done. Oh yeah. yeah there Repaired you go. corrosion yeah. damage to floor. Again, is that 2000? 2000, 2001. So it's had a, a handful of work done in 2001. And in 1997, it was recovered, calling fault memory and diagnosing system, removed all plugs and clean, replaced throttle switch contacts, check all wiring from DME unit, found injection signal at fault, remove and install control unit for transistorized ignition, strip down control unit, dry out circuit boards, reassemble. Yeah. Found to be full of water. Oh dear. <laughs> yes, big reveal. <laughs> Oh, more spark plugs. Oh, more spark plugs? Plugs are out. The plugs. The, well, the plug leads are off. Ah. Oh. oh, this doesn't look good. Is there any water in? Bloody hell, the brake fluid's up to the top. <laughs> God, Absolutely yeah. up to the top. Yep. Well, I suppose it just had the brakes done before it come in, didn't it? It did. Um, not really. So because Pete obviously took the plugs out to either service it or diagnose a fault. So we're going to lube it, give it a really good squirt down there, and then we will check. Um, we'll top it up with water and stuff. Put a battery on it, and we'll see if it turns, turns over, over without. Because it, it might not turn over. It might not turn over at all. Maybe solid. I'm just going to lube the um, the throttle linkages. So we're just taking off. Let's see where the. The fuel line comes in to deliver fuel onto the fuel rail. We're taking off the in, which would come from the fuel tank, and we're going to attach the standalone tank invented by this man that has helped me out a few times on barn finds. That's good. Ah, right. I reckon, do you know what, I reckon mo most of the scratches and body damage on this from car. The storage. I've been from done the... from things being stored around yeah, it yeah. and on top of it. Yeah, there's some rust on the back arches, but other than that, it's, it's not too bad shape actually. No. Oh, yeah, great. Got dash lights. Yeah. Washer fluids low, brake lights are faulty. Okay, well. But, uh, and the immobiliser light is on. Yeah, well, we'll try and see if it'll turn over without that. Oh, that's an, is that the fuel pump? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's, I can hear it priming. Right. Yeah. So I, I'll check to see if anything comes anything's out. coming out, yeah. Nothing yet. Yeah, so is that just... That's yeah, so that's on crank. Yeah. And there's no crank, so I suspect the mobiliser's stopping ah, the crank. Okay. So let's try that. So you've got the little dongle of you for the immobiliser. Uh, let's just hope that... Yeah. Oh, okay. That was an engage. Yeah. Wonderful. It moved the fan a bit. The mobilizer's gone again. I think it's jammed now. Do we put it in first gear and rock it? Try and rock it, I, I think so. Just a little. Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah? Just saw a rocker lift there. Yeah. Okay, and again? Yeah. Yep. Rockers are turning. Okay. Yeah, it's more hopeful. Yeah, I mean, we could drizzle a bit of oil in there. Yeah. Nothing on the starter. Do you think the starter's... Engaged. Engaged, but it's... Right, so we need to hit the starter. Right. Just got to give it a tap. That solenoid will hopefully release. Oh, 
Yeah, give that a go. Okay. Okay. That was free. Okay. You've got a serious spark. I can hear it. Well, I think we'll put the plugs in, put the fuel can on and... I Let's do good. it. Let's go for it. Yep. The plugs that Pete bought are never fitted. We're going to fit. It's not seized. Actually sounded really quiet. It did really. There's the mother of all sparks trying to jump out. I'll get rid of the old ones because presumably we're not going to need them again. No. And then um, go and get your can of hope. This is Tony BMW's can of hope. This is Tony BMW. This saves us so much hassle on these chutes. Electric fuel pump, cunningly attached to fuel lines and a regulator. Attach these to a battery, switch on a fuel pump, you bypass all the old fuel tank and all the old fuel lines, feed it straight into the engine, boom, done. This requires a freeze frame for some atmosphere, go. Right, we've connected up the inlet, outlet, return to the can of hope. That's going to be connected to the battery in a sec. I'm just going to give it a tickle of, of uh, water in the header tank. We run it up. And like Tony said, because the regulator's on there, you can tell the pressure's up to two and a half bar, which means those fuel regulators there on the rail are working still, which means we are primed and ready. Ready? Yep. Whoa, all right. Nice, good first effort. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, so it's immediately starting and stopping. Something not right. As soon as you take, yeah. As soon as, so, you, as soon as you back the key off, it's killing it. You know, off crank. Oh. It's killing it. You're saying as soon as you release the key. As soon as you stop cranking. It kills, like it's it kills it. the fuel or the, no, it doesn't kill the fuel or it, it kills ignition or something. Yeah. The, I mean, the concern is it was put in the garage and left with the plugs out. Yeah. Um, so we don't know why Pete took the plugs out in the first place because it was, had a problem running. Yeah. Um, there's obviously that invoice for um, being recovered from the roadside as well with electrical fuel fault. Diagnostic issues. Yeah. Um, so it could be a hangover from that. Could be, yes. I think we'll go around, just clean all the connections. Yeah. Um, give it another go. Okay. Yeah, put the fuel on. Come on. Oh, I think that's running longer now, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder if it is that immobiliser being a bum. We know it's not the fuel pump because we heard the fuel pump running before. Yeah, and we don't um, need it anymore. No, yeah, it's not, it's obviously not in the starter circuit because again, you used to be able to wire them through the starter circuit so the starter wouldn't fire. It's obviously not through that. So it's obviously through some sort of ignition. Well, hang on, is it is it because we've stopped the fuel pump? Potentially. potentially. Is that annoying the car it because it's, be. it's sensing that it's not got an active fuel pump? It might be. Actually. Is it a safety cutoff? It, it might not be, but it might have something else. That's a very good point then, actually. We've just got to watch now. We're going to be pumping fuel everywhere. I mean, I can hold it. And if it's drowning me, I'll go, let's turn this okay. off. Oh my word! Okay. <laughs> well, on the one hand, we, <laughs> we got the bloody thing going. On the other hand, I'm going to smell of petrol for days. How cool is that? Very. It's a safety thing. It must, must think that maybe there's an accident or... It runs, a, it runs a series of checks and goes, that's not right. So, right, let's get a bolt on the end of that bloody thing. 
or a gallon. I've got a gallon can. It's either that or it's put some fuel in it. Not, not at this late no, stage. No, right. Do you know what I'll do? I'll just drain it into a gallon can, right, okay. an empty one. Yep. Okay, this is our final, final attempt at it, really. Tony's taken the plugs out, dried everything, let it air for a while, had a cup of chai, put it back in. We've got the return tank here for, uh, for the fuel from the tank. Hopefully it will run for more than two seconds. If this is all we get, that's all we got. At least we know it, it works. Runs. Yep, yep. Well, there you go. That's working. Missing a bit there. Hey? Missing a bit. Missing. It's alive though. It's alive. Definitely alive. That's what you wanted. So it is, it is misfiring. Interesting. Which maybe the original reason why it was uh, the plugs were out. Trying maybe to diagnose it. An ongoing it. issue, yeah. So it runs. It does run. It does run and it sounded pretty all right, actually. Yeah, the engine I mean, sounded all right. Obviously, actually. the exhaust has got a few holes somewhere, but look at that. It's nearly, it's nearly put a gallon of fuel from the, uh, from the tank into it, so the fuel pump. Yeah. Even the fuel pump works yeah, fine, yeah. which is normally, that normally dies, doesn't it? Yep. I, and, think, I think the thing to do is we'll connect all that back up and it might actually run from, the, from its own fuel. Right, just for the sake of it and because it's dark now and uh, we're pretty much run out of time, Tony thinks, let's just try running its old fuel, which still smells pretty good actually, and looks clean, into the engine, no can of hope. Put the air cleaner back on. Okay, bonus, bonus run. Sounds good. Wow, on its own fuel. Yeah, great, good result. There you go, look. There we go, I hope you've really enjoyed this barn fine episode of the Late Break Show. The car did run. The 628 CSI is going to be coming up for sale and I will let you know about that on our social media and in the description below. It's gonna to go to a new home where it deserves to hit the road again. This has been a 628 CSI. What are we going to do next time? I don't know. But if you've got a car that you think is of interest, either in a garage, a barn, a hedge, a drive, get in contact with me. I'll put the contact details uh, below in the description. Cheers. a bit straight straight just wait a sec stop 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 turn, do you want to turn it off tony